So what do we have on the bench today? Well, today on the workbench, we have a Next. Uh, Next is a machine that came from Next Incorporated, which is the company that Steve Jobs founded after leaving Apple and before returning to Apple. Uh, we have the Next on the workbench today specifically because I had a request from a fellow collector to uh, send over a spare uh, Next keyboard that I happen to have, and I decided that I'd like to give it a test for him before I send it over. Seemed like a good opportunity to get the machine on the bench and give it a test. So we'll start by wiring the monitor and the computer together. There is a Next proprietary 19-pin uh, connector that came with the system that was designed for doing this. Uh, I unfortunately do not have that connector. Um, and in addition to that, the actual 19-pin D-sub connectors are extremely difficult to locate. So at the suggestion of a fellow Next collector, I committed some surgery on some DB25 connectors that I happen to have to create a form factor that will fit over the 19-pin connector that the machine allows for. And you can see on the other end, I had to commit even a little bit more surgery uh, by cutting off one end so that it would fit into the recessed area of the case. Uh, the cable looks like it does because I didn't happen to have any 20 conductor cable lying around, so I used two 10 conductor cables. <laughs> uh, it was an ingenuity kind of thing. If I had ordered parts for this, it would look a lot different, but I did this out of stuff on the bench. So I'm going to start out by hooking up the monitor cable side. That's this side where you can see that I now, sorry, that's this side where you can see that I had to cut the side of the connector to fit the recess. Make sure that I get the pins in place. That is the primary connector. The other thing that plugs into the monitor is the keyboard. So the keyboard itself actually carries its connection from the keyboard through the monitor through this single cable. You'll also notice that there's no power going into the monitor. That's because power for this monitor also comes through this harness. Um, this also provides for audio out, headphone out, and a microphone in. All, so that's all done from the monitor, and all of those signals are passed through the 19-pin cable back to the CPU. On the back of the CPU, you see connectors for serial, SCSI, external hard drive or tape drive, CD, printer, Ethernet, coaxial, how quaint, and the 19-pin other end. In this case, I didn't have to commit the surgery because there's no recessed case. I just had to bend the tab back out of the way and use the appropriate 19 pins. Now we're in. Before I plug the power cable in, I'm going to go ahead and plug the mouse in. The mouse plugs into the back of the keyboard, as so, because I want to have all the other cables in in case the machine goes and powers up on me as soon as I plug the cable in. And now, here we go. Our cable in. All right, now we're ready for the big test. And a lot of this depends on whether or not I made the 19 pin cable right. But here we go. I'm pressing the power button on the keyboard. Well, it turned on. It's warming up. Slightly louder than I expected. That was an interesting little noise. Whoop. Whoop. Is that, was that a post beep? Uh, that's a good question. Or a post boop? boop. I don't know. <laughs> All right, we got something going here, but the monitor is obviously needing a little bit of adjustment. It is extremely difficult to see, but we are indeed booted. Oh, I can just make it out. 
in the camera. There's text at the top. There is, and it's getting clearer. Yes. So that's we are good. booted to the next ROM monitor. So we are not booted to anything on an internal hard drive or a optical drive. Uh, we are booted right now strictly to the ROM monitor. Okay, so now that I'm in the ROM monitor, I'm going to test the keyboard by hitting the simplest ROM monitor command there is, the question mark, and return. That obviously worked because it gave me a printout of the available commands. So now you have access to the base commands of the ROM monitor. Correct. So we're not booted into the Unix operating system yet. This machine does run a version of Unix uh, called Next Step um, or Open Step. There are a couple different versions, but in this particular case, we are only booted to the ROM. There is no operating system installed on this machine yet. And if I hit M to print memory configuration, it tells me that I have 16 megabytes total in the form of four megabyte page mode SIMs in socket 0 through 3, 4 through 7, 8 through 11, and 12 through 15. Uh, EC, print recorded system error codes. No error codes. Well, that's a good thing. Usually a good thing, yes. So, we've successfully tested the keyboard. It seems like it's working well, or the machine itself. Uh, what I'm going to do now is power it down so that I can test the other keyboard before I send it out to the fellow collector who needs it. Note, when I hit the power button, it's soft. I get asked, really power down? Really. This is the keyboard that I had spare that we uh, pulled out and did a little bit of surface cleaning with yesterday um, with some uh, baby wipes and some uh, Q-tips. Uh, really does need opened up and a full uh, clean out done, but we'll leave that to the next collector. So, test number one, power switch. So you have to press and sign. hold the power button? No, I, uh, it powers up when you let go, is what it does. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Now the monitor's a little bit better, so we can actually hear and see what's going on. It's running through, didn't find an optical, and bang. Back at the raw monitor. So, same test, question mark, return. Keyboard seems to be working. M, return. Okay, so we can take this keyboard and send it out to the fellow collector who needs it for his next restoration, and uh, he can decide how far into it he wants to get and clean it the rest of the way up. Power down, really power down.